there are so many people out there uh, who want to volunteer and, and find a way in which they can help. We've got some brilliant, brilliant people mm -hmm. that have come out of the, the school system here in Attleboro. You actually perform as an elected official the way people should. There are no, uh, no agendas. Uh, nobody has any projects that they have to complete. Um, but we're just sharing information. Welcome to People It's Good to Know. Tonight, we're very fortunate to have a lifelong friend of mine and local personality, Dave Kane. Dave, thank you it's so not, much for being here. It's not here. lifelong yet. Um, well, for either of so us. far, but yeah. God knows how long we might make it. <laughs> I just want to let you know, uh, I want to be very honest with you. I didn't vote for you for the mayor. You also don't live here. Oh. That's why. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to think all the people who did vote for me actually live here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but or used to. Or used to. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been a, a fixture here in Attleboro, though, for probably four decades now in one way or another. Yeah, just about. Well, you want to tell I, well us, I've been around. I don't know if I've been well, a fixture. Stop by telling us a little bit about your background. And, and for some people out there may have never met you or might not know anything about you. Well, um, I've been in broadcasting uh, since I'm a kid, since I'm like 14, I think I have first time in a studio. I've done radio and television, and uh, produced uh, a lot of stuff for TV, PBS, and, and hosted stuff for TV and radio. Um, I also have a company, I uh, had a company called Dave Kane Ideas, mm -hmm. and what I did was I sold promotional uh, concepts to corporations and consulted to people like McDonald's and Fram and Autolite and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, Parker Brother Games. I did that stuff. Uh, I also did some stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, I now do two uh, shows that I only do for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. One is called Misgivings. It's an evening with an Irish Catholic priest. And the other is called Jokes My Irish Father Told Me. Mm -hmm. And now, I, in addition to that, I'm uh, doing a Saturday morning radio show here at WARA from 9 to noon, and I'm loving it. And you've done a number of radio shows here in Attleboro over the last, what, four decades? Yeah. Um, you know, with, with pretty good results, right? I mean, you, over the years, have had a, developed a following of people who... Well, we, we've we've been lucky. I say we, the people who have enjoyed it, have joined me and uh, gotten a chance. I've gotten a chance to kind of draw on that to get some stuff done and to get people to be involved and care about what's going on in their community or care about the people in the community. They're uh, hitting it tough, mm. maybe. And right. so, yeah, I, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of the things that you've been involved with in life were really related to nonprofit and charities and helping people. And you've been able to use that medium of radio to really make people aware of all the different things that are going on and how they can uh, participate and help. Yeah, I think it's important. It's funny because I think about it. You know, uh, I used to run WARA in the mm -hmm. 80s. I was a manager for the radio and the cable for a while, but and I ran ma mainly the radio station was exciting to me. And uh, we, when I took over the, the management, uh, WARA was a 1,000 radio, a 1,000 watt radio station, mm -hmm. and I got a chance to. Uh, help guide it to 5,000 watts, which at the time was a big deal thing. Mm. Now it's not so much because of the internet. Now right. every little radio station can be an international radio station because of the internet. Amazing. Uh, I have gotten calls from India and England and Sweden and all around the world uh, because of the internet. But the thing is that I used to think to myself, Someday somebody's going to say to me, okay, kid, I gave you a chance to have a 5,000-watt radio station or I have a, a radio show and talk to literally thousands of people over mm -hmm. the time. Uh, what did you do with it? What did you make happen as a result of that? Did you sell T-shirts with your name on it? Or did you try to do something for others? Right. And that's, thank God, that's what yeah. I've tried to do. Yeah, I mean, everybody who knows you knows that you've spent almost your whole life just trying to help others. I can't think of anything I know that you've ever done that was about self-promotion. <laughs> it's always been about helping other people, which is, which is how we've met along the way. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah we met. Uh, we I, I think it was through Christmases kids. for Kids yeah, right. sometime in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was uh, a lot of fun. We've done a lot of good things, and of course, 
Christmas is for Kids and the Greater Attleboro Area Council for Children, mm -hmm. who doesn't get the credit they should, by the way, right. because they are the parent organization mm -hmm. for Christmas is for Kids. Um, they're parallel in, in age. And, uh, and so we've been very lucky that this community and all the surrounding communities have really been terrific in their opportunity and their their willingness to uh, to help out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and I've talked about this with many other guests before, but how many people there are out there who are willing to help if someone just makes them aware of how they can help? And I think that was your strength, is being able to explain to people how they could help. Yeah, yeah, I think that was, that was it. You know, it, it, the Christmas is for kids thing, you know, it's funny because it was just an idea that I had. And it was just, you know, I said, look, what if this and what if that? And people heard it and identified with it and said, wow, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. And they jumped on immediately. And, and it built and, uh, and it's grown every year, thank God. Mm -hmm. Even during the pandemic, I thought we were gonna take the pipe <laughs> during the pandemic. But no, they came through. Yeah. It's, I think what it shows is that, you know, if you have a good cause and a good idea, it's just a matter of making people aware of it. I mean, there's so many people out there that want to help in some way or another and just um, need to know that they can. Well, the other thing that happens with people, I think, it, it, it's in your thought process in the sense of you say, gee, I think I'd like to do that. Oh, they probably have somebody that does that. Right. Oh, they probably wouldn't want somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, they probably, people talk themselves out of being Va uh, valuable. Right. They talk themselves out of it. They're afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of looking stupid. I've made a career out of looking stupid. I don't care. Hey, that makes two of us. Thank yeah. you. And, and so it, it's the speaking up, you know, right. like the old thing about the, the emperor having no clothes, right? Mm -hmm. You got to be the kid that speaks up and says, wait a minute. All right. This guy's standing over here in his underwear. Let's yeah. do something about it. Well, and I mean, in order to get anything good done in life, you got to be willing to take a chance. And, and I think people mm -hmm. that know you know that you know if the cause is worthy enough, you're not afraid to you know put your name on the line. Most causes are worthy enough. Mm. Yeah. 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 So, um, other than for you know your local TV, uh, at your radio show that you're doing now. What else are you actively involved in at the moment? Well, I'm always involved in uh, Christmas is for Kids because that's year round. Right. We do. We have black belt shoppers, mm -hmm. and we our board will have a, a, a Zoom meeting or we'll have uh, emails, and, and one of the shoppers will say, "Hey, I just found a, a sale on winter coats mm. for kids of all sizes." Yeah. Can I get X amount of dollars and right. buy 19 coats? Right. And, and we all vote and say, yeah, go ahead. So, I mean, that's ongoing. And that's an amazing thing to think about, that you, you created a Christmas program that now requires year-long work to be able to make it actually work. That's, yeah. it's hard to believe. Well, it's expanded. Why? I mean, mm. the, the original Christmas as we get to content is there, mm. but it looks entirely different from the way I started it. Yeah. It was a simple little... Johnny needs a, a G.I. Joe, yep. would you bring it? And somebody hears it and brings it. Now it's a massive <laughs> organization, mm. and it's really cool. Yep. So I'm involved in that. Uh, I'm doing the, the shows that I do, the comedy shows, mm -hmm. and I do them for nonprofits and have say, arranged it. All to help people raise money for their cause. For their church or their organization or their cause. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's very easily done, uh, and I, I'm able to value it for them so they don't get burned mm. uh, in, in any way. Right. Uh, they can put it on. If they win, they win. If they don't, right. they didn't lose any money. Right, because they can never be sure what kind of an audience you're going to have, depending on the weather. Well, or it's what, tough. You know, it's yeah. tough. You're going to get a haul. you got to get food. you mm -hmm. got to get... Uh, the way I've devised it for me and for my stuff is so that they don't have that risk. Right. And I think, I think I've seen the Father Misgivens one about four different times. And it was always a good attendance at the ones yeah, that we, we happened yeah, we to go to. Well, thank goodness. Um, yeah. It always is funny. That I think all the ones I saw were in churches of one way or another. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's yeah, quite an interesting all performance. Churches, all, yeah. Yeah, Unitarian and Episcopal mm. and Catholic and you name it. Yep. I'm still trying to get a synagogue to, to yeah. have me, but we'll see. At some point, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So, well, along the line, what is it you'd like to do in the near future? Something that you haven't really had an opportunity to do yet that you've thought about? I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I really don't, I don't have, I don't have a bucket list mm -hmm. because I've done 
had the chance to do right. so many different things. Because you haven't held back. I mean, if you had an idea, you tried to take yeah, advantage of it. I mean, it. I, I only ever wanted to be what I am. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid, it was a disc jockey, and then I became a talk show host, and then I produced commercials, and then I did commercial voiceovers, mm -hmm. then I did on camera work. I mean, all of the stuff right. that you think, boy, I'd like to, you know. Right. And I've been very lucky to have the chance yeah. to do all that. And all those things are sort of interconnected. There, uh, there's a skill set that lends itself to that whole field. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, my father was a performer. He was a singer and a, and a, and a comedian. Oh, I didn't know that. He uh, ran the NCO club, one of the NCO clubs during World War II. He was the MC for that and ran that. So he had a background in that too, you know. And uh, so now uh, you had said that you started in radio when when you were a young kid. I mean, um, did you? study anywhere professionally to learn those skills? Oh, hell no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, had, we had in uh, Attleboro, in Attleboro, excuse me, on Atwell's Avenue mm -hmm. in Providence, yep. there was a, a little club that was started, uh, uh, and it was uh, based on a radio station. So these kids, before I met them, these kids got together and they opened a radio station and a storefront on Atwell's Avenue. And they had a, a, a control board, and they had turntables, and they had all this stuff. And we were on, it was a 100 milliwatt radio station. Now it was the smallest wattage you could have without a license. And they put the transmitter up on the third floor on a high Atwell's Avenue hill. To get us bigger. <laughs> and we played a lot to the, uh, to the projects in Manton Avenue projects. Mm -hmm. yep. So we had a great, huge audience there. <laughs> and that's where I first started actually to get on the air, was there. And I did that for a while. And then I started doing uh, record hops. People don't know record hops. And then, you know, I've been tell people what they are now. And, uh, and uh, so that's where I actually started. And then I finally, you get a job for a few bucks. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> and, and so how, you know, you've done an awful lot here in Attleboro. Yeah. How did you actually come to Attleboro? Because there's oh, plenty, of places, a, you, plenty of places you could have gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been fired from some of the finest radio stations mm. in New England. <laughs> I, like to, I like to brag about that. Uh, yeah, well, my, John Aberray, do you know about John? John Aberray worked at WARA. He was a news director, and then he was a PD guy, uh, program director. And he and I were friends, and I knew him from when he worked at Channel 12. And, and I, uh, I was walking the picket line with the people at Channel 12. This is a hundred years ago, and we got talking, and um, he said, "Oh, you should come up and see my radio station in Attleboro." So I went one day, and we visited him. And then one day he said to me, "You know, you should come on and do a show." Now they weren't doing talk then; mm -hmm. they were doing music. I think Straminsky was on in the evening, but they weren't doing a lot of talk. And I tried to con convince him that it's not a good idea to hire me because <laughs> not only will they fire me, they'll fire him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But he and he really wanted me to come, so I went and I I did two hours, uh, ten to noon, yeah, uh, f five days a week, and from then that I he left, and then I got the PD job, his job, and then I got the general manager job, and then I oversaw cable for a while, and then um, and then I uh, oh then the day that we were awarded the. Um, NEB, National Association of Broadcasters, Crystal Award mm -hmm. for Community Service. And I brought that into the owner, Peter Atmar, yeah. and I said, look, the NAB Award for Crystal, Crystal Award for Community Service, a huge award. And he said, thanks. He put it aside and said, you're fired. <laughs> Well, you and him had quite quite a relationship over the years. We had a great relationship. I, I, I always speak well of him. He and I, he was, we were like Damon and Pythias. He was a great guy. He, uh, he, he we had a, we had a deal. We had a handshake, uh, and the deal was that I got to run the station no matter what. Mm. When he was tired of it, he could fire me and I'll leave without a problem. He kept his word to me for like seven years. But the his friends and people in muckamuck places mm -hmm. put a lot of pressure on him, and his his wife hated me. And uh, but his mother-in-law loved me. She used to come in from Argentina and yeah. listen to the show. She loved me. <laughs> and uh, finally, he he caved and and uh, 
Yeah. Said Tata. Well, well, it's interesting because when you're in the media, especially every day like that, you know, people have the opportunity to pick and choose what they like about you and what they don't. And oftentimes they remember the oh, little thing they don't. I've got to tell you a story about that. Sure. Oh, what, what, that time? Oh, we got plenty of time, story. Dave. Uh, Andy Numeroski, mm -hmm. who owned an insurance agency, yep. you know? I remember Andy. Passed, right? Yep. Well, this is really funny to me. He had this huge American flag that he used to put up outside his insurance agency mm -hmm. every morning. Sometimes I'd drive by and I'd see him putting it up. After I was on the air about two or three months, I don't know, he started calling Peter, telling him I should be off the air. I should have a right to be saying those things and I'm a liberal nutburger or whatever, <laughs> and whatever he was upset about. And it just seems to make me laugh because here he is putting up the American flag and at the same time trying to get me fired yeah. uh, for speaking. Quite an American concept, huh? Yeah, it was quite an American <laughs> concept. So Andy, uh, rest he your was, soul, Andy. He was a good guy. I, I, I really liked yeah, he him. He was a nice guy. You know, he was a nice guy. But, but it shows that, you know, you may appeal to a certain group of people, but there's always going to be some critics, no matter what. Oh, they, oh absolutely. Yeah. Well, you, after hello, that's the beginning of your last <laughs> goodbye. You realize yeah. that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, so again, you were involved with, with starting the Christmases for Kids, with starting the Council for Children, and I'm sure you've played a really active role in several other nonprofits over the years. You want to elaborate on any well, of that? Um, well, I was on the board of uh, 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 Rhode Island Special Olympics for, for a while. Mm. I was on the board for the Heart Fund uh, in Providence. I was, uh, I worked in, I, I don't know, I, I worked in a lot of things. Yeah. Well, and the reason I ask is because in all the time I've known you, you seem to hate to take any credit or recognition for any of the good things that you've done. Well, because I, because I haven't, oh, listen, this, this goes back to my talk about the idea. If I said, okay, let's all get together now and walk up Park Street and kill the mayor. I'd be walking up the street by myself, not that I would, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I really like Kathleen, I'm mm -hmm. saying. But I'm just, if, if I said that, nobody's. Because it's not a good idea. When you have an idea that people identify with, they do the work. Mm. They do the caring. They do the purchasing. All the money, I mean, we do an average of between 800 and 1,000 children every year for Christmases for kids. The, and do you know how many family members, friends, neighbors, people who have gotten together and said, a lot of people get together and they, they take a family. Oh, collectively, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, businesses mm -hmm. take families. I mean, you'd be astounded at this. But so, I mean, it's not about me taking it. All I said was, hey, my dad's got a barn, let's put on a show, Yeah. right? But you weren't and afraid to do they that. They do it. But well, yeah, but that was nothing. I mean, I, you know, I've insulted, had people be mad at me for ideas worse than that. Yeah. So, but I mean, it, it's everybody else that does the work. I, I'm not being modest, I'm being realistic and honest. Mm. If, if I have an idea or anybody has an idea and you try to sell it. Now, I was pretty good at selling it, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. But other than that, people have to decide for themselves that this is a worthwhile project and put their, their hand in their pocket. Well, that's it. So many things come down to money. But I've, my experience has been that when it comes to charitable things, if it's a worthwhile cause, the money shows up. You know, oh, the, the, it has a way of it, working its way to a good cause. The, exactly. If people identify with it, it's good. So you can't be taking credit for, for the, it's all the people that make it happen. Uh, you know. right. Right. Yeah. Now, um, have there been any things that, that you, any ideas you've had that didn't really pan out quite the way, you, or at least didn't turn out the way you in, originally intended them? And I don't mean to put you on well, the spot. Been, no, no, no. There's been there's been a few show, a few things that I've had ideas for that haven't quite like creative shows. Going, yeah, that that stuff like yeah. that, you know. But I mean, I've, I've had, I mean, I've been very lucky. I, I did one thing I didn't mention was I did mall shows. I did shows in malls and shopping centers. Jeez, I think I remember that a while back. Yes, I think and I, uh, <laughs> I developed a thing called Store Bingo. And Store Bingo yeah. was uh, across the top of the in in a mall. Mm -hmm. Across the top of the card, say store instead of bingo, and under it, set of numbers, it had the names of stores in that mall. Mm. So for 20 minutes, people would sit there, and I would list all the stores for them by playing the game. And when they got bingo, they'd get a gift certificate to one of the stores. And, and I did that up and down the East Coast for 
uh, that's, several years. Now that's a really clever idea. Well, it was fun, yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, so, and that worked pretty good, but I've had other things that, other shows like that that I yeah. pitched. And, and, and you mentioned the key word there, fun. Most of the activities you've been involved with have always turned out to be fun. I right? hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, because I like it. I yeah. like to have fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah. That's good. So why don't you tell us a, a little bit about some of your radio experiences that you've had. I mean, with all the thousands of hours you've had on the radio, there got to be a few good stories that we can tell in public. Well, yeah, all right. A um, few. <laughs> as you said that, I'd say, I'd say something about the power of, of broadcast, whether it's radio or television or, or even print. Mm -hmm. too. You have no idea how people are affected by what you say, mm. what you do, how they see you how they hear what you say. I was a disc jockey. I hadn't gone in to talk radio, and I was working on the old WJAR radio, which is now WHJY. Mm -hmm. But it was WJAR was back in the 70s, and I was doing weekend music disc jockey show. And it, you know, simple, you know, play, yeah. you know, here's, here's Neil Diamond, da-da-da. Right, it wasn't rocket I'd science. In, was, I'd yeah. slip in a couple of one-liners yeah. or whatever, do something silly. And uh, f phone rang, request line, so I pick it up. And this woman said to me, Dave, yeah, uh, I just want to tell you that last week you saved my life. Really? I said, yeah, yeah, really. She said, I've been very depressed. Terrible things have happened to me. This thing had happened, this thing happened. She said, and I had decided to kill myself. She said, and I had booze, and I had a bunch of pills, and I was going to take the pills and drink the booze. She said, and I had your radio show on in the background. She said, and while I was staring at the pills and the booze, trying to make up my mind if I was going to do it, you said something <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> she said, and I realized at that moment that if I could laugh, yeah. I guess I really didn't want to do this. Wow. Now, I don't know if it was bull. Yeah. It might have been a completely baloney story. But, but maybe not. Who knows? But, right. but, but I know that people have been, have been touched by things that they've heard on the radio, that, that uh, talk show hosts, mm -hmm. uh, disc jockeys, people like you who are on the air. Yep. They, they, they hear about your accident, right. about how you survived, and yeah. how you, you came back. Yeah. These are the things that we have the responsibility to share with people right. so that they will maybe think something different. Right. Well, and, and that's a good point. I mean, the more stories that you can share with the public, the more certain individuals out there will be able to relate to the situation that they may be in. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. as I've found, you know, there are a lot of people out there who face challenges every day, and when they become aware of the challenges that other people have overcome, it sometimes makes it easier for them. Yeah, it at least gives them to say that there is the strength. You can, you can get through it. Uh, I have gotten through some stuff in my life hmm. that I never thought I would have. Hmm. Yeah. But, but you decide that you're going to do something. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. Sometimes the biggest challenges in life can either be an obstacle from us, for us not to move forward or they can motivate us to keep pushing forward in a um, more positive, productive way. Do what you can. Yeah. Do what you can. You know. that's, that's actually an amazingly good phrase. Do you, you do what you can. You know, I mean, that's probably the, the, the key to success, right? Is simply just every day trying to do what you can. Well, it's the key to success or it's the key to accepting that you failed. <laughs> I did. I did what I, I could. Yeah. I did all that I could. Mm. I honestly, in my heart, did all that I could. Yeah. 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 A lot. Uh, yeah, a lot of us have had to accept that along the way. Go. And, uh, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so do you have anything exciting coming up in the, in the near future that for people that maybe want to see one of your shows or something you're going to do? Absolutely nothing. Nothing on the schedule. Nothing going on. <laughs> you're not filling the last five minutes asking me to fill in. Ask me a question. <laughs> Uh, uh, you punish me now because I yeah. spilled my milk. Uh, hey, it's my show. I have no problem with you doing whatever <laughs> you want, Dave. But um, I mean, on, on your Saturday morning show, you, you spend about three hours every Saturday morning yeah. with local guests. Yeah, well, some national guests. Oh, there's one now. now this, I, I, when is this airing? When, when are we Sometime airing? in the next week this okay, should, this should air. On Saturday the 25th, one of the people I'm going to have on is uh, Squire Rushnell. Squire Rushnell uh, was an executive with CBS News. He is also the creator of Schoolhouse Rock. 
Oh, really? A junction, junction. Yeah. That's your function. I know that. <laughs> and he has something now called God winks. God winks are these incidences or coincidences in uh, your life when you think, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. As you know, I've got a life full of them with Nikki's messages to us. Mm -hmm. And God winks are very similar. They're, they're coincidences from people who have passed or from the deity himself mm -hmm. or, or herself or herself. Um, to let us know that they're around. Right. They're not they're coincidences. They're well, they may be coincidences, but they're placed there for you to, ex mm -hmm. for you to have an experience. That's, that's, yeah. And he's going to be on it. It'll be pretty cool. And, and you're fortunate, because of how long you've been involved in a lot of things, you're able to get guests like that. You have a network of people where you know, the average person wasn't going to be able to get him to be on my TV show. You know, but you're able to get people like that to be on your radio. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, I have, uh, I have a couple of friends who have hooked me to this person mm. and that person. There's a, there's a publicity guy in uh, in L.A. that sends me stuff all the time for his clients. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, well, you have a funny story. You know, but sure. I had, uh, oh, no, you only got two minutes. That's okay, go ahead. Um, I was supposed to interview Paul Anker, and his people were, oh, you can only have it for a half hour, and da 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 da. Well, I had him on the show, yeah. and I surprised him with a couple of things. And at the end, he said, you know, he said, this is really, guys, I'm out of time. I got to let you go. He said, I, he said, I'm off next Tuesday. You want to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right. So I came back in the studio here, and I, I had another interview with Paul Ink. That, that's fantastic. That's kind of funny. I mean, do you find it like, challenging to decide who to have on because again well you have the opportunity to have a lot of different guests Is yeah, well, a tough I, try choice? To, I try to keep it eclectic I try to make sure mm. that there's maybe something a little serious yeah. uh, maybe something I, I'm very into religion mm -hmm. and to and religious beliefs and mm -hmm. what people got into that uh, and I try to have something light in the last yeah uh, uh, last hour, I tried to have something kind of leave people with something light, you know. But you can do both. Well, that's good. I know you, you were going to have the former Attorney General, Aileen Violet. Yeah, on she'll the be other. on soon. Yeah, she'll yeah. be on soon again. That's good She's because... An old pal. I, yeah, I, I think people... I think like people like to hear from some of the people from the past. People who have had a lifelong experiences and can reflect on things My they've seen. My whole show is somebody from the past. It's me. <laughs> I'm all past. No, I don't think you're all past. I think you've got a great future ahead of you, Dave. Oh, good. And, and short, yeah. but a good word. <laughs> and again, I mean, I, I, I want to thank you very much for being here with us tonight because um, you know I've had the opportunity to be a guest on, on your radio show many a times, and I've always enjoyed it. And I like to think that you know, it's given me the opportunity to share a lot of information with the public. And, you know, as I've titled this show, People It's Good to Know, it's Except all... Except in my case. Yeah, said, no, it's, it's all said, about yeah. people out there being able to get to put a face with the name they may have heard of, of people who actually, you know, make our community what it is. And over the last four plus decades, you've helped to make Attleboro really what it is. And, and I really appreciate you being here with me this evening. And I appreciate all of you tuning in uh, for our show every week where I hope to bring to you a lot of individuals who can help, you know, make your life better, hopefully. And I look forward to having an opportunity to do this again next week. Have a good night. There are so many people out there who want to volunteer and, and find a way in which they can help. We've got some brilliant, brilliant people mm -hmm. that have come out of the, the school system here in Attleboro. You actually perform as an elected official the way people should. There are no, uh, no agendas. Uh, nobody has any projects that they have to complete, um, but we're just sharing information.